guys, today we're going to answer one of our most requested questions. Well, which one is that? What is the magic behind an epicenter? So stay tuned. So one of the products that has been out in car audio for a very long time is the Audio Control Epicenter. Right. If you guys have never heard of an epicenter, go over to audiocontrol.com, check it out. What it is, it's a harmonic restoration device that is designed to bring in low frequencies where low frequencies might not necessarily exist. Okay. So for example, type of music you might need it for or that it might be helpful for is let's say you have some 70s, 80s rock music, such as like Van Halen, or something that has a very dry, almost non-existent bass or older music that was recorded back in the, the, the day as they say that didn't have a really good recording because they just no one had subwoofers back then so it was like eh, we don't need it small right. speakers it's designed to help that another type of music it'll help it is Spanish music and by that it's the Spanish polka style music yeah. that, that just has almost no bass yeah it yeah. will make it have bass there's also that next category of what the epicenter can be used for. And that is if you already have music that has bass and you want that bass to just go crazy, just You can use an epicenter to do that as well. There's really no wrong way to use an epicenter. It is a really fun piece to play with. Do you need one? I don't know. After this video, you just might think you do. Now we're going to break this video into a bunch of tests that we're going to perform so that you can kind of get an understanding of what the epicenter is doing because there's a lot of mysterious thought processes that go on behind it. Yeah. And to be honest with you, we've never really taken the time to throw it on the bench either just to see the magic behind the unit. So join us today as we head over to the bench. So to do this demonstration, we have a bunch of tools that we're gonna use so that we can give you a visual representation of what is happening in the sound. Now for a source unit, we're using a Kenwood DDX 595. We're powering that with this iPhone here over USB. We have the epicenter. We have an RTA here that is showing us a full range output from the radio. It's essentially hooked up to the front output, so it's not crossed over. It's just what's coming out of the radio. Over here, we have an RTA that is showing us a non-crossed over subwoofer output. Output. Then we have this RTA here, which is showing us a crossed over subwoofer output. For those of you that aren't familiar with what an RTA is, it's a real-time analyzer. It's showing us graphically what sound looks like. Now on this side of the RTA is going to be sub, which is the same as this side here. On this side, which is the same as this side here, is going to be highs. In this mix, we also have a digital multimeter. And all we're doing is looking at the output voltage of what's coming out of the sub channel. The reason why we're using a phone is because we need to do a couple things. For one, we need to play some music, and two, we're going to play a couple test tones. To start out with, the epicenter basically has three controls. It has the width, it has the sweep, and it has the controller up front, which controls the effect. The sweep is going to be your frequency that you're trying to influence, and it's influenced between 27 and 63. 63 is the fatter side. The width is how much of the frequency above and below that center point that you've picked with the sweep you want to affect. So if you don't want to affect much of them, you would keep it on the narrow side. If you want to affect a lot of the signal to the left and right of it, you'd put it more on the wider side. And then of course, as we said, this is the control, so this is what's going to bring in the effect, turn it up or down. How does this all work? For this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a generic setting of setting both of these at just 12 o'clock, which is straight up and down. We wanna go ahead and play some music that is, doesn't have a lot of bass. So for that, we're gonna play some 1979 Van Halen off of Van Halen 2. Now what we're looking at is this side here. This is where the bass is gonna be. As you can see from this, Van Halen really doesn't have a lot of bass to it. Now we'll go ahead and turn up our control knob and you'll see that area starts to black in and fill in. What we've just done is created a bigger bass sound from our Van Halen. Now, depending on the type of music you're listening to, it'll have that effect. Let's go ahead and play something that has a bunch of bass. So as you can see now, playing this song, there is a ton of bass in this area. It's, it's not lacking in, in any of that. We'll go ahead and we'll turn up the epicenter now. And as you can see, that whole area just went crazy. If you were actually hearing this in a car, at this point, your car feels like it wants to explode. That would be the effect of really taking the bass music and just grilling it up. Alright, so now that we have a better idea of what the epicenter does to the music, as we showed we have music that has no bass, we can go ahead and create bass where it wasn't or, or uh, the illusion of bass, and then when we have music that has tons of bass, we can just gorilla it up, just, just expand, it. expand yeah. the heck out of it, just make it 
Okay. <laughs> now, the question that we get asked the second most behind yeah. what is an epicenter is audio control recommends that you run a full range signal into the epicenter. Most of the time, you're going to run your subwoofer output from your source unit into it. Right. We're going to show you why you want to make sure that crossover is either off or set extremely high. So let's head over to the bench. We'll take a look at that. So for this test, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at using the same tools. Here we have a 100 hertz test tone plane. Here we have a 100 hertz test tone plane with our epicenter set to there again, 12 o'clock. We have our control knob turned all the way down. So even in the all the way down setting, you can see there is some effect that it's having on the overall sound. Here we have the same signal, but this one is gonna have a crossover applied to it. So to answer the question, when feeding the epicenter, you wanna feed it as much signal as possible. The bare minimum you want to cross it over at would be 250 if you can't run it a full range input you want to get as close to that 250 as you can some radios output for the subwoofer if you put it to flat it turns the subwoofer off or the highest point it'll go up to is 220 you just want to get as close to that 250 as possible if you can't shut it off now keep in mind most subwoofer amplifiers are going to have a subwoofer crossover built into it go ahead and use that crossover and not the one coming out of your source unit so now we're gonna look at these two guys right here. This is not crossed over, this is crossed over. They're basically putting about the same amount of voltage out. This one's at 1 1.4, this one is at 1.5. So as we come over here and we set our crossover to 80, you'll notice that there is a voltage differential. This one is putting out 0.8 volts, and this one is putting out 0.6 volts. Now we have the volume on the radio turned down. We're not going for maximum voltage output here. What we just wanna show you is that there is a difference in output signal if you have your low pass crossover on. So now that we understand what we actually need to feed this beast so that we can get the best signal out of it possible let's talk about that 100 hertz the 100 hertz we played through it was actually we were tuning to 50 because it's only between 27 and 63 on the dial the frequency we're finding was 50. let's go ahead and take a quick example let's head back over to the bench so what we want to do is set our tone generator to 70 hertz want to go ahead and send our control knob to 12 o'clock and turn our width all the way down now over here on our voltmeter we have it set to AC, we want to start turning this dial until we see the voltage flatten out or get as high as it can and then start to go down. Alright, so starting to go down, so we'll go ahead and turn it back up, 81. Oh, it looks like 82, 83. So now we have this set to our maximum output of 35. We'll go ahead and come back over here, put in our RTA, go ahead and turn it down. And we have our center frequency here of 70, which is the tallest band right here. Now when we turn this guy up, that is 35 Hertz. And that is gonna give us an output voltage of 1.9 volts. So you can see we're getting substantially more output at that frequency. If you've got a box that's tuned to that, this thing is gonna just explode. You can still adjust the width to have it go a little bit wider to make it even more full and more just crazy boomy. So for the most part, the epicenter comes out of the box ready to go. You have the three knobs that you need to play with and that's it. And by play with them, I mean, at the end of the day, you really just want to play with them. There's no, do this. Most of the time, you're just gonna be using your ears because that's what makes the epicenter great, is ears, hearing its effect on the woofers. And remember, little steps, little steps. Don't go, because as we just showed, when you're way over here, you're making those super low frequencies go crazy. So try to find the sweet spot for your music. And as we said, out of the box, it's pretty much ready to go, but there are a few settings internally that you might need to adjust for your system. Let's go ahead over to the bench and take the top off and see what's inside. So to get inside of the epicenter, there's four screws here that need to be removed. When you pull the top off of this, make sure that the power plug is disconnected and that nothing else is plugged into it. So once you get the top off, there's essentially four locations on this where there's an adjustment to be had. The first thing we want to look at here is the balanced unbalanced input. Default is set 
to balanced. If you remove the jumpers and put them to the far setting, they will become unbalanced. For most systems, you can leave this set in the balanced position. In some systems, the source unit may be looking for ground through the RCAs. In that event, you should go ahead and change the jumpers to the unbalanced position. I've never opened one of these up and moved those. It's always just worked. Chances are good, you're just gonna leave that alone. Located right above it is this guy right here. This is a PFM. This is basically a subsonic filter that's designed to limit the amount of output from the unit. It's essentially a high pass filter that's designed to help control the sound going into the amplifier so that you don't blow your subwoofers by playing frequencies created by this well lower than needed. This is gonna limit the unit from doing that. Now, if you'd like it to do that, you can go ahead and pull this guy out and replace it with a different chip. This is removable. Next is base output. This has a couple different settings. 2.5 volt, 5 volt, 7.5 volts, and 10 volts of output. Default is 2.5. More than likely nowadays, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set it to 5 volts. But there again, be careful. Leave it at the 2.5 volts first and see if that gives you what you need. If you feel you need more output, go ahead and switch it to the 5 volts. But there again, be careful. Make sure your amplifier can take the amount of output you wanna put into it. You don't wanna blow up the input section of the amplifier by overdriving it. But be careful, I can't stress that enough. Last is this guy right here, which is the grounding input selector. You have isolation, 200 ohm, and ground. What this is designed for is if you get any noise through this unit, engine noise or whine or anything like that, you can go ahead and select one of these three options to see if that gets rid of it. When you do that, make sure the unit's power plug is disconnected. Anytime you have this cover off, make sure this power plug is disconnected. And since we mentioned the power plug, Let's go ahead and talk about that for a sec. Now, Audio Control loves using these standard connectors here where you have wire inputs and then set screws on the top. So it needs a ground, it needs a 12 volt, and it needs a remote turn on. Very similar to an amplifier. You can actually daisy chain off the amplifier or from a distribution block to turn this thing on. Unlike most audio control units that use a four pin connector, this one does use a three pin. It's not gonna have a GTO circuit in it to create a remote turn on. The last thing that this comes with is of course the control knob. Now, Audio Control has redesign these to make these a little bit nicer looking than they have in the past. You can still take it all apart and just put the knob in a location if you want. That's up to you. Or you can just mount it up underneath the dash if you don't want to drill any holes in anything. Now as far as effect lights goes, this guy right here that you saw light up throughout the video, this just doesn't turn on. This turns on here. This is the power indicator. This is the effect light. So as the epicenter is actually doing what it needs to do, this is going to go ahead and light up and rumble. Alright guys, we hope that better explains what the epicenter is does and how it works do you need an epicenter you might you might yeah i myself i like the idea of an epicenter i think it's really cool yeah. i listen to a lot of van halen and classic 70s 80s music that an epicenter really helps yeah. one of the biggest complaints i had when i had big subwoofers in my car and was playing that music is i have these big subs that just aren't doing anything i had a 12 inch woofer that sounded like an 8 inch because the music I was playing just couldn't do what I wanted it to do. And then of course I'd play some big bass music and it would just be loud. So an epicenter is designed to help that situation. Alright guys, that brings this one to a close. We know there's going to be more questions about it. Cool. Go ahead and leave those down below. You never know, it might be a part two to this video. Exactly. Fernando, if you please. Alright, if you like this video, please subscribe, share, like. You know where you find us, Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. You guys have a great night as always. We'll see you later next time. Bye. Bye.